So if there is one meal that I would call a staple in American cuisine, it would be burgers and fries. Um, burgers and fries really got started, burger joints kind of started popping up in the 1920s. And um, then there were the drive-throughs and drive-ins that popped up with the uh, expansion of the highway in the 40s and 50s. And ever since then, burgers have kind of been a staple in American cuisine and uh, in our taste buds today. So if you were to ask me um, what I thought about when I think about burgers, I, I have to say I think about Bob from Bob's Burgers. It's a television show that comes on in network television. And it is such a funny show and I love it so much because one, there's all these funny characters, but aside from that, if you were to tie it all back into my life and, and what I do, um, in the background is always this chalkboard that has the burger of the day and it's always these crazy puns and a lot of what happens here in the magic of, of what I do when I create comes from some of those puns and creating my own puns. So this is an episode, an ode to Bob because I love burgers and I love Bob's burgers and that it just all makes sense. Today, I'm making two of my favorite burgers, the Blue Blah Blah Burger and the On The Lamb Burger. Of course, no burger is complete without piping hot, fresh fries, perfectly seasoned out of the oil. I'm starting with the fries, and I know that sounds crazy, but I like fresh and I like homemade, so in order to get crispy fries, we have to start with them first. I've already cut my fries up, had this really awesome cutter that cuts fries and so I got these nice little fry type shapes. You start off with those and then you want to soak them in water. It's so important that you soak them first because that's how you're going to get all the starch out and you get these nice crispy fries on the outside and these like soft soft little fries on the inside and it's so great. All right so we're gonna well I got my fries cut up you get yours cut up and then I am going to get these patted dry and we'll get them in our fryer. Start by cutting your potatoes into fry-sized sticks. Rinse them off and soak them in cold water for at least 30 minutes or overnight. So the key to getting nice and crispy potatoes is to use the a candy thermometer or just the thermometer in general to get the grease right up to the, the correct temperature. I used to just kind of eyeball it or not even eyeball it, just be like, oh, it just gotta get hot. It's not the case, you gotta get it right. Start by getting the oil to 300 degrees Fahrenheit, and you want to do this in batches. So you get a couple of fries. Uh, you don't want the temperature of the oil to drop down low. Remember, you dried off your fries. I'm sure you guys saw that. You get those in there, and then the bubbles start. I love that sound. And once that happens, we're going to let these fry for about mm, five to seven minutes just to get them started. We'll take them out, pat them dry again, let them cool off. We're gonna move on to a different part and we will make, we'll start making our burgers. I'm using a seven quart enamel coated cast iron Dutch oven and filling it just halfway to get that deep fried effect. Before you fry, make sure you dry. Drain the fries and pat them dry. Remove the fries from the oil and spread them out over a wire rack lined with paper towels and pat them dry. We'll fry these again, but for now, on to our burgers. I love blue cheese, I love bacon, and I love burgers, and so it, it made sense to put them all together in one, but I mean, it's nothing, com it's nothing uncommon, right? Like, I'm not the first person to make a blue cheese bacon burger, but I can remember the first time that I ever had one, and um, it was so good, and now whenever I go to a restaurant and I see one on the menu, I go, all right, that's what I'm getting. So, I just, they're just so good. I can't wait to go make it. My Blue Blah Blah Burger is so good. Using quality ingredients, especially the beef, is key to making this mouth-watering burger. First, bacon. I'm using thick sliced applewood bacon and getting the pan nice and hot. And the key is, to cook this bacon low and slow. 
we get a nice brick red color. And we just do three slices at a time. Look at that amber color. It looks delicious. I am excited to put these slices of bacon on our delicious blue blah blah burger. Next, onions. Onions add a sweet element to this burger. I know you're thinking onions are not sweet, but when you cook them, they release their sweetness and oh man, do they deliver. Caramelized onions is all about patience and taking your time. You can use any kind of onion. I like to use red onions because they give this nice acidic um, balsamic vibes that I really enjoy. Start by slicing the onion into strips. In a large saute pan, melt two tablespoons of butter. The key is to not add all the onions at once. You want to add them little by little, that way it's easier to stir them as they start to release their moisture and contract. And you also want the moisture to evaporate and not steam the onions. Now, we wait. Reduce the heat and stir the onions occasionally to be sure they don't burn. As the water starts to evaporate, we want to deglaze the pan. You can use some vinaigrette, balsamic vinaigrette. Um, you can use some wine. Um, and if you have a more bitter onion, you can use a little bit of brown sugar as well, or just regular sugar. Red onions are pretty sweet on their own, so I just added some vinegar and a little bit of red wine. We're gonna let these caramelize some more, and we will have caramelized, caramelized onions shortly. Finally, all of that prep is done for our blue blah blah burgers. And I know it seemed like a lot of work, but I swear everyone is gonna love them and they're gonna be a great hit. Good beef is tasty on its own. A generous amount of fresh ground pepper and salt is all you need. Gently mix into the beef and form your patties, which are about six and a half ounces for each patty. Have you ever had a burger that was so dense and so dry? Well, the reason why is because it was either packed too tight or they just um, didn't weigh it out, or mostly because they pack them too tight, really. So, in order to make sure that we have nice, evenly cooked burgers, all of them evenly cooked and uh, delicious, we're going to measure out our meat for about six and a half ounces into our kitchen scale. I got six and a half right on because I've been doing this for so many times. And we'll pat them into a nice ball. But again, you don't want to smush, smush, smush. You just want to pat them nice. Be nice, be kind. And we should, and with two and a half pounds of meat here, we should get about five, six burgers. All right. Where do all the puns come from? Uh, really, I just come up with them on my head. I know that sounds really like pompous of me, I guess. I don't know. I, but I do. I come, with them, I come up with them on the spot. But sometimes I do get confused, or not confused, but I get lost. And um, I have this Facebook group, which is me and two other people, and it's really a messenger. And I'll go in, I'll be like, hey, pun family, I need some puns. So actually with the Blue Blah Blah Burger, um, I went to the group and I said, hey, I'm making this burger, and it has bacon and cheese, and it's it's pretty standard blah, blah, blah type burger. And um, one of my friends says, well, why don't you just call it that? Call it the blah, blah, blah burger. And I was like, oh yeah, that's cool. And then she goes, oh wait, no, like, what if you played on the French, the blue cheese part, and made it a blue blah, blah burger? So you kind of have like, ooh la la, but blue blah, blah, and it kind of worked. So we went with that one. Um, for the on the lamb burger, I had come up with that one just randomly, I mean, it just kind of made sense. There aren't a lot of lamb puns, and it's L-A-M, which is on the run, but I just put the B on the end because we say lamb without the B, and mine's like lamb. That's dumb. <laughs> I'm stupid. Um, so yeah, so that one's the lamb burger, on the lamb burger, and the blue blah blah burger, and I've 
I'm excited to make them. My On The Lamb burger is inspired by Mediterranean flavors. With lots of spices, I top this burger off with a special Mediterranean salsa and a homemade rosemary aioli. So one thing that I really love about cooking is being able to go in the kitchen and make up recipes and fail and then do it again and be right and then not write it down and then have to go and do it again. I think with the On The Lamb Burger, I kind of did the most real work. Um, so with that one, I, I started off with a idea of lamb and then I added some things. And that was funny because I, I had to like, say, look up lamb, look up what type of flavors go with lamb, say, okay, these are the things I'm gonna use. And then I had to do all this preparation where you go like, okay, I'm gonna use five tablespoons and three and two and mix up the ratios, but I have to remember that I got this much lamb this time. And that. so um, that's just always, that was really fun. So I, I really enjoy going in the kitchen and being able to create my own recipe. So that's one of the things I really like about this uh, particular, theme that we're doing today is I, I did the work. I mean, I do the work all the other times, but I really, really got in there because we kind of breezed over the history a little bit. Um, so I kind of did more heavy, intensive work with the recipes. I'm doing things a little differently this time. With the beef, we finished off with it. We seasoned it last, but the lamb, we're gonna start with doing that first. And I used to think that lamb was really bland, but now with my more refined palate. I find that lamb to be, or lamb is really earthy. And just seasonings that you add to lamb really enhance it. We're doing more of a Mediterranean style, kind of like a gyro. So let's get into it. Season two and a half pounds of ground lamb with two teaspoons dried thyme, dried oregano, onion powder, and garlic powder. One and a half teaspoons of salt and pepper. Three teaspoons cumin, and one and a half teaspoons paprika, the zest and lemon juice from one medium-sized lemon, and lastly, four teaspoons of Dijon mustard. We got the lamb all mixed up. There's two more things that we wanna add to it, and that is our lemon juice with some lemon zest. And I'm probably gonna need to get a spoon out for this. We're gonna add some Dijon mustard, about four tablespoons. And it just adds some moisture back into the, the lamb so you get a nice juicy meat. It's time to make the aioli. Don't be afraid guys, homemade condiments are easy to make. This quick and tasty sauce will not just impress your friends, but give you the confidence you need for any task you tackle in the kitchen. I really like this recipe because it has this tangy, like, spicy bite to it, it's really good. And one thing that I do have to say is, especially with this recipe and serving others, it might take a little bit of extra time and it might be a little hard to find, but use pasteurized eggs. That way everybody's nice and safe and healthy. In a food processor, blend together two egg yolks, the juice from half a lemon, and one fourth teaspoon of kosher salt. Once combined, add two medium-sized cloves of crushed garlic. This is where it gets serious. Slowly pour a steady stream of two thirds cup extra virgin olive oil. This makes the aioli nice and creamy. Just before finishing, add coarse ground pepper to taste and the needles from two sprigs of rosemary. All right, so we just got the last of our oil all emulsified. There's some science going on in here too, which is really awesome. So what happens is uh, once you get that slow stream, you get the air to whip and the fat globules is what they call them. I, yeah, I'm reading this book. And they, they separate and they get uh, suspended in liquid. And that's why you get this light colored, airy looking and delicious creaminess. I'm gonna add my um, rosemary needles now. I don't feel like you should call them leaves because they're small, like pine needles. I don't know, whatever they're called, leaves or needles. We're gonna get these, I'm gonna get these chopped up and then I'm going to add them to the, uh, to the mixer here. And then we will have a delicious, creamy rosemary aioli. 
So the final topping for the On The Lamb Burger is a Mediterranean salsa. It's so refreshing and bright. And what I really love about this salsa is that it's whatever you wanna make it. I use some olives, uh, cucumbers, onions, and tomatoes, and dice them all up. I actually sprinkled in a little bit of basil today, but it's so bright and refreshing, like I said earlier. And sometimes, when I'm really uh, feeling myself and hungry in the middle of the night and I have some of this made up, I tiptoe into the kitchen and grab me a spoon and get a little bite. It's so good. I can't wait to put these on the burgers. I am so excited, y'all. I've got my uh, cast iron skillet grill heated up here and we are ready to cook these patties. I'm gonna let these cook for about eight minutes on each side, and then we will be ready to flip them. Sizzle, 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 sear. I love that sound. Don't you? Oh my goodness. I'm gonna get these nice faux grill marks because this has nice uh, grill lines within it. Ugh. I'm gonna get these cooked up. Heat a skillet to medium high heat. If you're using non-stick stainless steel or cast iron, add some oil to prevent sticking. For burgers this thick, cook them eight to 10 minutes on each side or until an instant read thermometer reaches 160 degrees Fahrenheit. For ground meats, I'm a huge fan of well done. I'm at the eight minute mark and it's time to flip these burgers over. And I just want you guys to take a look and see how nice and brown. This one's so soft it's falling apart. How nice and brown that is on that side. Look at those nice, beautiful lines. Oh my goodness. It's gonna be so good. We're gonna give this about eight more minutes and then we'll go ahead and take this apart. Look at that, when it's starting to fall apart, it should be done pretty soon, so. Ooh, yay, I'm excited. <laughs> Burgers are just about cooked. I'm gonna finish these off with some cheese. On our lamb burger, I'm putting some feta cheese. And then on the blue blah blah burger, I'm putting some blue cheese, of course. And I'm going to put a lid on this just so that our cheese starts to melt. Ugh, I'm so excited. This is the last time we have to fry our fry and this is the last thing that we're gonna do. I might have one surprise for you, but we're gonna get these fries in the oil. I have heated the oil up, this time to 400 degrees, right under 400 degrees, around 375-ish. And this is how we get those golden delicious fries. Ah. Man, I really love these bubbles. They remind me of my childhood. My mom and my dad would often make homemade fries for us. Maybe not necessarily to this level, but it definitely did it often. And it only takes a few minutes to get these nice and golden. These look delicious. I'm going to go ahead and get them out of the oil now and look at that golden color. Oh my goodness. Ah, they look crispy and they pour so, look at that. I wish you could hear the crunch. It makes me so happy. Oh, I'm gonna sprinkle these with a little bit of salt while they're hot. Fry the fries for another five to seven minutes. When they're all done, sprinkle on a generous amount of salt. And now, it's really time for a patty. 
I'm so excited because now it's time to put the burgers together. And I have, I never make real recommendations, but today I'm going to go out and get you some St. Dow 4 Wild Blueberry Spread because we're using this on the Blue Blah Blah Burger. And how do you make something more blue? Well, I have blueberries. And it is going to just add the sweetness to the burger that just takes it to that next level. So I'm gonna put these together and then I'm gonna put them in my mouth. Here we go. And there we have it. Now we have ugh, delicious blue blah blah on the lamb burger. Nice fries to go with it. Dinner for two or three or four or eight, really, because there's more fatties in the refrigerator. So we're gonna have lunch. I have one more surprise up my sleeve and it'll be time to eat this delicious meal. I think you really can't have burgers and fries and be classic American without making milkshakes. So I decided last minute that we're gonna do that too. And I, in true fashion, make my own whipped cream. So I have really cool kitchen gadgets here that allow me to make my own whipped cream. And I probably should have shook up first before I twist it, but whatever, we're here, we're clear. Um. Vanilla ice cream, chocolate ice cream, we're making one of each. You need about one and a half cups of ice cream. And I like to go ahead and get mine nice uh, and soft. I'm making a mess. And it's up to you really, as much as how thick you want your milkshake to be. Always keep paper towels close by. And you'll add about eh, one fourth cups of milk. Don't use heavy whipping cream, <laughs> you'll get this messy mess. And you just. I think I need just a little bit more milk. And, ah, uh, dreaminess, it's heaven. Just pour that, oh, right in there. I could have done a little bit more. You know what? What we'll do is, you know what I'm thinking. Yep. We will top it off with chocolate. How's about that? And this is for those days when you decide that you're gonna cheat because definitely you're gonna have to go on a run in the afternoon. <laughs> after this heavy lunch. <sighs> Oof. And we're just gonna, boom, top it off there. And it's swirling in. Oh, look, it's like a double thing. 
the vanilla kind of engulfed and took over, which is fine. Take up your whipped cream. Let's make sure. Yeah, we got good whipped cream. Boom. And of course, cherry. And nothing's more American than some red, white, and blue sprinkles on top. It is time to have a patty. Let's go. <laughs> Here we are, and I can smell everything, and it smells so good. I think. I'm gonna start with the blue blah blah burger. And this thing is huge. I don't know if I can take a whole bite, but I'm gonna try. Mmm. 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 Yes. Yes. Oh my goodness. Yes. So good, sweet, tender, juicy. Ugh, I'm just a mess right now. Ah, good. All right. On to the on the lamb burger, and this is a brioche bun. I use a sourdough bun, and it just ugh, for that blue blah blah just kicks it off. <sighs> There's just this explosion of flavor. And then you get like little chunks of feta that give you that saltiness and also these salsa and the olives, ugh. And of course a fry. Mmm. Nice and good. Perfectly salted. Nice crisp. Y'all, your party, if you did this for a party, Last thing last, my milkshake. It's good. Everything's great. Oh my goodness. Great for any birthday, any party, just anything. I think I got like Something stuck in my, there we go. It's out of my tooth now. Oh my goodness. Everything was great. Everything is delicious. I'm gonna sit down. I'm gonna hammer out the rest of this. Yeah, and I'm gonna run like four miles because of it. So good. Cherry on the top. Guys, thank you so much. I've had so much fun today. I can't wait to see you guys next time on another exciting episode of Canty Cook It. Yes, I can. And now you can too.